Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another Sandblue Blue video. In this video, I'm going to be trying to fix this uh, Game Boy Pocket. Um, so this Game Boy Pocket is actually already modded. It has a IPS screen. Um, it has a sound damp kit, and um, I think it's called a clean power um, thing, which I'm not too sure what it's meant to do but it has one um so i bought this for 39 pound which isn't a bad price at all because the screen on its own is like 60 pound um the guy did want 60 pound 65 pound for this but he just suddenly lowered the price of it i added it to my watch list and all of a sudden he just dropped the price from 65 to um 39 so i decided to buy it so this has multiple problems, but for the most part, it is somewhat working. So if I put um, two batteries in it quick, you'll see that the actual, oops, let's get that in the right way. You'll see that the actual IPS screen does work, usually. It's a bit temperamental, you see. I haven't even got a game in. And it's and it's not like there's there's nothing in the cartridge slot, but it's saying that there's something when there just isn't. Um, if I put a game in, it does sometimes read, and sometimes it kind of like uh, kind of like I'm not sure what the right word is. Yeah, let's turn that down. So we'll see the sound amp kit is working because it's quite loud, but sometimes what would happen is it would go down to the nintendo bit and then it would just freeze and the screen would like bleed out all the colors would just like slowly fade away on it uh, which isn't good the power led isn't working and it should have a touch sensor but which is here um but it doesn't work um as you can see this does have a kind of retro pixel effect like my Game Boy Color but it doesn't seem to work so the touch sensor should be here and I'm hitting this quite hard I shouldn't need to be hitting it with this much force see and sometimes it just freezes like that and now we have no Nintendo logo um well, we didn't have a Nintendo logo but it's still booted anyway this is a bit hit and miss um so yeah i'm not too sure what i'm gonna do with this i'm gonna assume that the power led will need to be replaced in it um the only thing is though i don't know what like this has already been looked at by the guy who built it obviously because he was wouldn't have gone and put about like 85 pound worth of parts to together to then not get it working and just instantly sell it on ebay the guys clearly must have looked at it and realized he couldn't fix it but i have a feeling i can because basically the thing that's worth money in this is the screen the shell the amp kit um they're unique whereas the motherboard i can get another motherboard now i do have another motherboard the only thing is uh it doesn't have the power led which is a bit annoying so hopefully i'll be able to get this one working um so yeah the screws on either side don't really seem to be coming out they don't really seem as if they're getting attached to anything so yeah that's just spinning Let's see if it will lift up, which it does. All right. Well, there is a screw thread there, which is something. So let's just take these screws out. This is quite a nice shell, actually. I think, though, this is one that is already modded because it's got, like, a small square taken out of the battery cover, and I believe that is for a wireless charger because you can mod these with wireless chargers. I'm obviously not going to do that because it's very over the top, um, but yeah, so, um, 
for starters, C28 has got an awful lot of solder on it. So I think that has definitely been tampered with. Hopefully you can see that. Um, we've got the sound amp kit here. We have, ooh, there is a whole new power board there. Didn't know the clean power took the old board out. Um, now, I could see this on this metal bit here. There is a lot of flux residue on here. Hopefully my camera will focus it. There's a lot of flux residue on this plastic, which pushes against there. And this whole bit here around the power LED is just sticky. I could probably yeah, lift it up just with one finger. Um, there's a slight bit of corrosion on the battery contacts. Not too bad. Um, but yeah, let's continue with disassembling this. So there is a bit of damage to the shell. There's some exposed copper there around this screw, which that's never really good. It's not the worst, but it's just not the best. So I'm not too sure how I'm going to go about lifting this out. Ooh, <laughs> that might have something to do with it. Pretty sure that's meant to be covered up and also stuck down to the back of the screen. Otherwise, yeah, these pins haven't even been cut. I think that these pins are meant to be cut. Otherwise, they can just puncture the ribbon cable. And actually, if you look on the screen connector, it's got a big, like, mark in it there. Which is probably... Uh, down to the that ribbon cable so let's lift this up uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna get my soldering iron quick and just plug it in and I'm just gonna desolder these two wires off the ribbon cable just so actually no I just need to desolder just the one so I'm gonna quickly just do that because my soldering iron will take a second. Right, so I've got that desoldered. So now we can just lift up the whole motherboard to have a look at what we've got. Okay, that definitely is not the original power LED. That is way too tall. I mean, it should still fit in the shell. It just looks a bit tall. So the rubber membrane's been cut for this screen. Um, not really anything else. So I think that. So I, I'm not <laughs> going to be honest. I'm not too sure uh, with this. My plan was I buy it. If I can't fix the thing that's at fault with it is the motherboard. So the thing that's worth the money in this is the shell, the screen, the amp kit the speaker not really the clean power thing but all of that could be removed uh so yeah um the only possible thing i can think of with this power led is there's a positive and a negative on power leds well there is on every uh light what if they've been soldered in wrong so let's lift this up and have a look at the touch sensor quickly because the touch sensor is basically non-existent it doesn't work at all so hopefully if we can get this small bracket out i think this bracket's actually been 3d printed um i don't know if i'll be able to get this out i don't want to damage the screen or anything so let's just try and get under there. That. There you go. Let's get this side up as well. Um, it's stuck down. Which is why it's not coming out. But I think I've got it. Just 
pull that out. Okay, so the screen is stuck in. I'm not going to remove the screen, and that might be part of the reason why the touch sensor isn't working, actually. Because it's stuck to the bracket and not the outside of the shell. So, that, that could actually just be it. Um, this whole ribbon cable looks fine. Uh, so what I'm probably going to do is just pull this off gently as not to rip it if it will even come off it doesn't really matter if it gets all creased because you're not going to be able to see it and it will still work so let's just kind of unfold this now and I'm just going to stick it to the shell not the bracket and hope that that will correct it. I hope that's the only problem with the touch sensor. Because if it isn't, I have no idea what I'm going to do. So that's basically it for, for this chunk of the Game Boy. So let's put the bracket back in. Put it the correct way up. That might help. Just put that in. Connect the screen back up, although I'm not going to be testing it right now. Like that. I'll get some electrical tape and put it over that. Um, button contacts on this are quite dirty, so maybe this has been working before. Then it stopped. Anyway, let's look at this now. <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to do is just desolder the power LED. Uh, in the hopes that if I just reverse it around that might correct it so this is this board has got a lot of flux on it and it shouldn't have this much uh, flux on it so let's just take this out oh that's very hot Ow. All right I'm just gonna hold it with my tweezers now just gonna put it in that way so I have turned it round I'm just gonna put it back in the other way okay so I soldered the LED in or uh, whatever it is in and it didn't work so I got some of my own LEDs here and it still didn't work so I had another look at it and oops, if I zoom in to the LED which is here there is a tiny bit that the trace that goes up so if I get this at the light and put it on it doesn't light but there's a tiny bit of trace exposed and if I get it right it does connect and work when it's on the trace, so I think the trace has got broken at some point. Let me try and do this with tweezers. So hopefully, I can't. I'm not going to be able to get it to work now, but it did there. It's not on the pad. It is on a small trace next to it that goes to the pad, but it isn't making contact. So. Annoyingly, I might have to do trace repair. But we do have a white LED on this, which is probably why it was changed. That so will match the colorway. So I'm just going to try and uh, expose some more of this trace and then try and get the two contacts to meet. Okay, I'll come back once I've done that. Right, so it's actually been about half an hour because I thought I needed to solder the white to this point here labeled q2e uh but turns out that that point there only lights up the led when the uh console's plugged in with a dc connector not batteries so if i put this in here quickly just to show you if i 
plug my DC connector in, turn this on, you'll see that when it touches here, it lights up. It's flashing because I'm not making a good connection, but there, it lights up. So if I turn this off quickly and uh, put some batteries in, switch it on, you'll see when I touch it here again, it doesn't it doesn't connect it, it just doesn't but when I connect it here so that's pin 5 on the link port you see it does work and switch it off back on it does work so I'm gonna solder this wire so this wire is actually just going straight from the back pin on the here uh, to there or oh, one side of the LED where the trace was gone and I'm just going to solder it to pin 5 so I'm going to do that now quickly so just going to take my soldering iron get a bit of solder and just do that take the wire with some tweezers because I don't want to burn myself this is quite small I can just solder this into place like that so obviously I'm gonna have to do cable management here and just sort out this cable but now the power LED lights up when we turn it on and if we take the batteries out so there is no way it can be getting power from the batteries when we plug in the DC connector. Even though if you have batteries and you plug in a DC connector, it automatically defaults to the um, other one. You see, it's plugged into a DC connector with no batteries, that it works. So yeah, what I'm gonna do is, I fixed the touch sense already, and that was really the only two problems with it. The touch sensor just wasn't fitted correctly and there was a small broken trace on this power LED which I have fixed just with this small wire but yeah so I'm going to do a time lapse of me uh, reassembling this now. Right so I've got it all assembled now So now we can pop a cartridge in and test it so Annoyingly, um, there's this small bump on the shell where one of the screws has come through. Now, this was on the shell before. Um, it was like that when I bought it, and it is actually because the screw there, it doesn't have, like, a base to sit on. Uh, it's almost as if the hole for the screw is just a bit too big for it. Um, so, yeah, that's a bit annoying, but not a lot I can do about it. But I still think this console looks very nice with the white on white. Um, so basically the only two things that were wrong with this was um, something was shorting the screen which occasionally made it kind of like bleed out uh, I fixed that by putting the tape over the um, control board for the screen touch sensor wasn't working and also the power LED wasn't working so let's test that all of these work now so the power LED is on as you can see right the sound is on, it's just I've got it muted because it's quite loud. Just test the touch sensor, which it does work. As you can see, now let me adjust my light quick. Actually, let's just turn this off so you'll be able to see the screen a bit better. Let's try and turn the retro pixel effect on. So, I believe you just hold this down, yep, for about five seconds. So, that, this is retro pixel effect on and now let's turn it off there so it, it does look pretty cool personally I'm probably going to end up using one of the green ones probably this one the most because uh, this just looks a bit more original but also the black and white one is quite good as well so yeah the retro pixel effect does kind of make it look a bit foggy though 
that's my only negative about it. Um, annoyingly, to change the retro pixel effect, it does seem to change whatever like color you've got it on. But yeah, let's just test it quickly. Um, I need to figure out how to change the brightness on this. Um, I don't know if there is a way. I don't know if you're meant to solder in extra wires. I hope you don't, because there weren't any extra wires soldered in. Um, but yeah. So this all works very nice. I'm quite happy with this, especially the price I paid for this. I've only spent £40 on this. I haven't, or 39 sorry. I haven't had to spend any extra money on this. So yeah, I'm very happy with how this has turned out. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.